happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. What's the truth about the interiors of the country? With this whole internet penetration thing happening, uh, I have heard stories like, you know, kids who were in villages whose parents didn't even have televisions are now listening to K-pop, like Korean mm. pop, watching K-dramas, like yeah. getting into Korean culture. And some of them are even learning co- Korean, which is so strange. Yeah, strange. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, they're farming and listening to K-pop. Mm. So this country is going into an extremely... I don't want to use a negative word, but like, I, wa- I was going to say strange, but I'll actually replace that with interesting phase of its own growth. Yeah. And obviously, if they're getting access to K-pop and K-drama, they are getting access to podcasts, they're getting access to BBC, they're getting access to uh, people like yourself. So, I think the learning's also becoming extremely ferocious. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens over the next two decades. It'd be so interesting, no? To be, as I say, we're living in interesting times. Look at the photographs, Naranvi. Like, if your parents show you photograph of uh, when they went villages, they went to villages of India. Look at the clothes that people were wearing, right? You knew immediately, farak kya hai, right? They were in dhotis and they were uh, women had their head covered in many places, dupatta or uh, whatever, and. In other places, like there are places I have seen women in uh, in some sections of in some when I was a kid, I've seen in some places where women didn't wear blouse. They just wore a sari and the palla around they didn't have blouse. You don't see that anymore. Um, as far as covering the head is concerned, in many places you don't see it, which you used to say. When you went to Haryana, you only saw salwar kameez and uh, sir dhaka hua ya yahan tak or in uh, Rajasthan to many places you saw that. That's all changing. That's one of the earliest, uh, again, I'm coming back to UP Bihar because, you know, those were considered so backward that it comes as a shocker to you when you go to those areas that you see that that kind of abject poverty. So when I, that was my first. And then I realized how, how insulated we are, you know, living in cities sometimes. Even when you went to the villages, you went to your nani ghar, dadi ghar, that's, that's about it, right? Or if you went, tourism or something you stuck in that hill station or you went to a beach resort you didn't really go and mingle with people um and um, i was just talking to a journalist i was interviewing her and uh, and she was saying that how she went to mayawati's rally and uh, she started crying in the podcast when she was saying that she went to that rally and she saw that there wasn't a single person who was wearing a cotton sari Everybody was wearing polyester and because they couldn't afford cotton sarees. How things have changed, right, in our country because polyester is easy to maintain. So people went into polyester sarees. My first impression I still remember is that somebody was talking, you're Dalit and all. I said, how do you know that you're Dalit? Hai? He could be an OBC or whatever, no? So he says, uske pair dekho. So I just looked and I said, what does that have to do? He says, because they're not allowed to wear shoes. So not allowed to wear not shoes. allowed to wear shoes. So they have cracks in their feet. So even when they go to the city, when they wear chappal, with the cracks of their feet, they knew ki wo dalit hai. But why are you not allowed to wear shoes? That was the casteism that was practiced, no, Ranveer. In there are certain places where uh, dalits were not allowed to, or even backward caste, not necessarily the most backward, ati dalit bhi nahi, but dalit or even slightly above, they were not allowed to own land only work as landless laborers. So you continue, you could you maybe say they sent their daughter or son to study. Wo IAS chala gaya. Wo, he's become an IAS officer. She's become an IAS officer. Maybe through the quota system or whatever the system, but she's become, so there is some kind of money which is coming in into that Dalit person's home because money order economy, that money is coming in makes a pakka house, but still is in that Dalit village. If he or she wanted to buy a plot of land to cultivate that plot of land, it took a long, long time because that it wouldn't be registered. Now, by law, he can. By law, he that farmer can go and buy land. But it never used to happen. They wouldn't, oh, file gum jayega, something will happen. So there was a Dalit village and an upper caste village. So you can't buy that. Same way Hindu Muslim. This is a Muslim gali. So the shops will be Muslim. Hindus won't be there. Hindu ki dukaan nahi hogi. Agar Hindu area hai, to Muslim ka nahi hoga. 
these are things which which bother you you want that in this day and age a person like you doesn't want that the india 20 years from now should still have these these are the dark truths of yeah. rural india even in 2023 yeah and even in urban and semi urban mm. india it is there in tier 2 cities it's still there a hindu muslim shaadi is not all that common and when it is it's fraught with all kinds of dangers dangers yeah because mobs come after you they still run away even though there is a special marriages act there is provision that you can marry whoever you want to in spite of that it comes with dangers unless you are super affluent and it doesn't matter to you i mean a bollywood uh, actress marrying a bollywood actor or a politician who two different religion unko to koi farak nahi padega na unless you're that super rich or you're super successful uh, and you have that kind of thing nothing will happen to you but otherwise it is not easy still you know uh the one thing i have found weird about traveling in a lot of pa- in a lot of parts of north india is that uh, people will see me assume that i'm from a city uh because of the way i'm dressed have a nice friendly conversation with me and by the 5 minute mark or 10 minute mark in the conversation they'll ask me for my surname mm-hmm. which is alabad which is ambiguous then usually it's a hindu person who end up meeting and they ask me so are you muslim so i say no i'm hindu and the next question is par alabad ya matlab kya and they actually asking me for my caste correct and i'm like yo <laughs> why should i tell you my caste yeah uh but for them it's a very normalized uh that's true. question and yeah. that's when you realize oh shit this is not even a village this is banaras <laughs> like yeah. this is you know shimla like mm-hmm. parts of india like that are still concerned with what your caste is so you yeah. can't imagine what rural india is like yeah so it, there is discrimination i totally get that you know there are many my name you can't tell what my caste is or anything like that and but yeah when you my uh, first uh, exposure to caste i guess that's because um it's also a privilege uh, ranveer because you have not faced discrimination mm. it's not as if people you've lived your life in a metro but even in a metro if you come from a from a different caste from a caste which has faced discrimination you would face it even in a metro maybe not to the extent that you would in a tier 2 town or a village but it's very very there like what happens uh in school it will happen really? in yeah oh yes uh it happens in subtle manners in cities because people know that they ought not to say it openly but in in tier 2 towns and all it just comes very naturally you know they will not i have seen a very senior politician i'm not going to name but a very senior politician i was covering the rath yatra and uh, of advani ji and uh, you kind of will figure out who are talking about but i will not name um and uh, so the media sits and eats right so hum log sab saath mein baith rahe the we were we were just about 5 6 of us covering that stretch of the rath yatra and the food came and and i saw this person who was not very senior at that time and he was sitting separately uh, he was not sitting with us he was just sitting uh, alag se so i just asked the person next to me why is he sitting separately like i thought he's you know angry with us or something like that that's why he's sitting separately saying no because the person sitting on your left is um is a brahmin and so that person is sitting separately because he thinks that maybe um that guy will not like it that he's sitting with you wow and i'm not sure that the person on the left um uh was was actually saying that or was practicing it or whatever or has a reputation or not or that person out of ke seen na ban jaye was sitting separately but he's obviously faced that kind of discrimination in the past okay. right so he's faced it and that's why he'd rather not have the embarrassment so he would do that like not uh, another uh, place that i went to i was an academic that i was interviewing you know again regarding politics but i was sitting there and talking and uh, like your guys came and gave me water so they, they kept a banana and water i was like who keeps a banana you know uh, so uh, i and kept tea 
सो ऐसे नहीं मैं चाय नहीं पीऊँगी मैं चाय नहीं पीती हूँ सो इस सिंह आप केला तो खा सकते हैं केले में क्या है सो आई वॉज लाइक वाई सो देन आई सेट ओके सो जस्ट इन केस दे फील दैट आई एम नॉट ईटिंग सो आई पील डेट एंड आई ईट इट एंड वेन आई वेंट आउट my cameraman told me that he is from a low caste he thought that you are upper caste and you're not drinking the tea so that's why kela was kept because kela you peel and eat and it God. doesn't matter which caste you are i felt so terrible i said but i don't practice casteism how did he know what my caste is and so he said they inherently know so they as a reflex mechanism they kept that you know how I felt so shitty. Pardon me for using that word. I felt shitty at that time about my privilege. That that generations of my people from my caste was somehow made this person who is, you know, who's seen it maybe or who knows it from this, experience. This is the Desi version of white privilege. Yeah. So I didn't realize it till I got to the workplace. I didn't face it. That is my privilege that I didn't face atrocity. so it's not it's not my fault that i didn't face it so i can get aggressive and say ki meri kya galti hai main thoda na ki mere purvaj ne kiya hoga aur wo bhi nahi mujhe pata mere purvaj ne kiya hai ki nahi kiya you know but the fact is that it takes generations for confidence to build in people who for generations have been subjugated so if you enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more